Welcome to the Country Club. I'm your host, Dan Purcell. Today's show is titled, Unaccessible, How the United Nations Deliberately Blocks Your Right to Information About What It's Up To. Open information, it's what keeps governments clean. As an example, the Freedom of Information Laws, or FOI Laws. The UN does not have them. Over 95 countries have Freedom of Information Laws. The European Union has them too. The United States federal government has laws protecting the public's right to information it keeps. And so do all 50 states. The laws are often referred to as open records laws or sunshine laws. Open the curtains and let in the sunshine, my friends at the UN. There is no better antidote for cronyism and corruption than sunlight. We must have transparency and accountability for healthy democracies. In the United States, we have the Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA. It was enacted by the 89th United States Congress, and it was signed into law by the President on the 4th of July, 1966. It became effective the 5th of July, 1967. All 50 states have freedom of information laws, and states have open meetings laws that protect the rights of the public to attend government meetings in addition to receiving the records of the meetings. The United Nations Club does not have a Freedom of Information Act. The United Nations Club does not have open meetings, period. The club prefers to operate in the shadows, without the public, without sunshine. Why do we need sunshine? That's right, for shining light on cronyism and corruption. Again, just to be clear, the United Nations Club does not have a Freedom of Information Act or Open Meetings Act. That is bad for democracy. Very bad. Forget about open meetings, says the club. We don't want the public to see the sausage being made, the behind-the-scenes wheeling and dealing, or the whining and dining, for that matter. The country club is for members only, not the unentitled peasant public. And forget about asking about documents on any of those meetings because the UN won't give them to you. They don't have to. And they let you know it. Oh, you can pay $18 for a guided tour of UN headquarters where you can gaze through the bullet resistant and soundproof windows of Conference Room 4. There you'll see 200 empty seats where the public used to sit during UN meetings before the public was completely blocked. At one time, the public was allowed to observe UN meetings, just like we should. I asked the UN, I asked the UN's Public Increase Office the question, hey, when was the public blocked from meetings? Why was the public blocked? Who made the decision? The office didn't answer the questions or provide documents. It instead referred me to UN security foreign investigation. Security told me, hey, we don't have to tell you when the public was blocked, why, or who made the decision, and we're not going to tell you. About 20 years ago, we decided to keep the public out of meetings. That's all you need to know. And stop asking the question. It is a dangerous world out there. We did it for security. Now, the club likes its privacy. So the public is left to get its information about what the United Nations is up to from the press. Of course, not just any press. The UN Club's hand-picked press. I like to call them Gladfly Media. Because they don't report on things critically, if they report at all. They're just glad to have access, glad to be there, glad to be scribes, and glad for the parties. They're so glad, they just don't care about bad development project, how smelly an unfolding scandal is, about reports of child rapes, or about stinking million dollar bribes of the UN General Assembly's president for a basketball court for his private residence in New York City, for his Rolexes, for his BMW payments. No matter how smelly the facts, they're just glad to lap up the club's talking points and head to press. And let's face it, the Gladfly media likes having its members screened, hand-picked by the UN press office. Why not? It gives the press club a bit of a monopoly on access. It's gotten so bad, some major media outlets don't even bother to show up. Here's an example. 
The media is given free offices at the UN. Free. I lived in Hawaii. The legislature there charged the media for office space. The Associated Press and the Honolulu Star paid rent. At the UN, it's free. But apparently free isn't free enough for the likes of the Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times. Neither major national publication keeps an office at the UN. They both pulled out. Why? Well, in the case of the LA Times, they're clear across the country. Their business is struggling financially. And maybe they don't want to pay the apartment rent for a writer. But heck, get an intern or something. And the Washington Post, just four hours away in the nation's capital, owned by Amazon.com tycoon Jeff Bezos. Don't tell me Bezos can't afford the free office. Where the heck are his reporters? CNN at least keeps a couple of free offices at the UN. But they're not there every day, and they certainly don't cover the stories every day. Maybe that's a good thing. There is one hard scrabble blogger inside the UN's, UN club's press pool. There is one hard scrabble blogger inside the UN club's press pool. He's been asking the tough questions for over a decade. His name is Matthew Russell Lee of Inner City Press, and he is tenacious, but he's the only one. And the Gladfly media have teamed up to try to get rid of him. Five of the Gladflies teamed up on a letter requesting the UN press office snatch Lee's UN accreditation. In their letter, the only damning complaint they had was that Lee was impolite to the UN spokespeople. Impolite, is that it? Thank God Matthew is still there doing the good work. Hey, United Nations, open your doors to a wider variety of media. Get a Freedom of Information Act. And get open, get an open meeting. And get an open meetings act. Our futures depend on it. Anyway, that's enough for today, folks. I'm Dan Purcell, your host and producer. Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you back next time on UN Country Club.